Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and today I'm going to show you how to bake a gluten-free Tiger Nuts winter spice cake. Now over the holidays people are using a lot of flour and a lot of people have dietary restrictions where they can't have flour and they need things to be gluten-free without that gluten. So this is a great alternative for a fantastic cake for any holiday occasion during the winter or spring or fall and uh, it's going to be beautiful beautiful presentation. Now what I'm doing is I'm using tiger nuts and if you've never heard of tiger nuts before they aren't nuts at all they're nut free and they look like this they're little tubers that grow under the ground just like potatoes or carrots or you know beets or anything like that and they look like little wrinkly chickpeas or uh, nasturtium nodes uh, they are vegetarian they're vegan organic non-gmo they are paleo diet friendly they're whole 30 and raw food uh, they have antibacterial properties they have a prebiotic in them they also have a resistant starch that is great for weight loss I know we're baking a cake but every little bit helps right so they're nut free they're gluten free they're cholesterol free and dairy and lactose free and they also supposedly are great for your sex life so there you go all right so I'm using not the tiger nuts today but I'm using the tiger nuts flour so that's these guys just ground up and milled into a beautiful flour and this is what it looks like. This is from TigerNutsUSA.com. You can check them out online for all of their products that are fantastic. And make sure you check out our playlist for all of our recipes and reviews with Tiger Nuts products because they're really fantastic. It's an epiphany in the kitchen, I say. Here you go. So this is the flour. It's very light and fluffy. It's really easy to work with. And it's going to make a beautiful cake today. I'm going to start by combining my dry ingredients in a separate bowl. We're not going to actually mix the cake batter in here so it's just to hold all of my dry ingredients. I have two and a half cups of this great Tiger Nuts flour and it's sifted. Okay, That's going to make it even more light and fluffy. Okay, I have a half a teaspoon of baking soda. I have two teaspoons of baking powder. A half a teaspoon of salt. I have one teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I have one teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon all the fabulous spices that make the winter the winter. Half a teaspoon of ground cloves, a half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Now if you just wanted to increase any one of those other ones, if you don't have pumpkin pie spice, that's just fine. You could use the ground dry ginger, but I'm using fresh ginger. I've, I've finely grated it and I've even included the skin and I'm going to add that right now and I'm going to mix that in my dry ingredients as well. I'm using about a tablespoon there. And I've also zested an entire orange. Okay, you're, also, you're going to zest it and you're also going to juice it. Reserve the juice and the pulp on the side. So this is the zest of one small orange. If you wanted to use some orange extract you could do that or an orange liqueur instead. That's fine. Dash of cayenne pepper in the dry ingredients. Just for a little bit of kick and spice. If you don't like spicy things, don't add it. But I really like adding just a little bit of that hot chili to it. Now I'm going to quickly whisk that through so that everything here is evenly combined, okay, before we start combining it with our rest of our batter. So just make sure everything's mixed through. You don't want clumps and clumps of the baking soda or the baking powder, for instance. Get those spices all mixed into that beautiful Tiger Nuts flour. Now if you're wondering what Tiger Nuts taste like, they actually have a beautiful kind of a coconutty flavor. Uh, that's what me and my mom both think. <laughs> it tastes very much like coconut. Okay, there's our dry ingredients ready to go. Okay, let's do a little bit more prep. I have four eggs that are at room temperature and what I want to do is separate them. Eggs and yolks. Okay, make sure you get no yolk in the whites. That's no yolk. <laughs> We're going to be whipping up the egg whites so you don't want any of that yolk in there to hinder them from whipping up the way you want. Okay? I like to use my hands instead of the eggshells to separate because I think it's a little bit softer. I think it won't puncture the egg yolks quite as easily. Now you could use a hand mixer or you can use a standing mixer, either one. You're going to need two mixing bowls, one for the batter and one for doing the egg whites separately. Also you're going to have to clean your beaters in between before you whip the egg whites. Okay. We're going to start off with three quarters of a cup of softened butter. Okay, we're going to cream this butter until it's light and fluffy, just a couple minutes. We have one and a half cups of brown sugar packed and I'm going to add that gradually, so maybe about a third at a time. 
and we're gonna cream that into the butter until it's light and fluffy as well. As soon as you mix this through, add a little bit more, and then add the rest. And then on the highest speed, you wanna whip that up, make it nice and light and fluffy. Do that for about two to four minutes. Also scrape down the sides of the bowl as necessary to make sure that everything gets combined. Okay, on a lower speed, I'm going to beat in one egg yolk at a time until combined. And then I'll add another one. And keep going. And the last one. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract at this point. There's a number of different extracts that would work here. You could use vanilla, orange, cinnamon, you could even use rum extract, that would be fabulous. A walnut extract, anything like that would be amazing. Mix that through. Now we're going to add a half a cup of pumpkin puree. Um, this is actually one of our canned pumpkin pie fillings that we canned ourselves. Make sure you check out our show for how to make pumpkin pie filling. That's what this is. I have a half a cup. So you could use a pumpkin puree or a pumpkin pie filling or even a mashed sweet potatoes. That would work just fine. And mix that through until it's evenly combined. In comes our flour. We're going to add this in four parts or so. So I'm just going to use a, a measuring cup and add a scoop at a time. Uh, boy, that smells good. You can smell the orange and the ginger. So I'm going to add this alternating with my liquid. Now my liquid, I'm using a half a cup of eggnog today, but you could use a half a cup of milk, a half a cup of tiger nuts milk. Make sure you check out that show if you're trying to stay, you know, gluten free and nut free and all that stuff and dairy free. If you don't want to use dairy, then use a tiger nuts milk. Um, also, I'm using the juice of the orange. So I'm going to use the ju juice of the orange after I've added the dairy, the eggnog. So I'm going to alternate flour and the dairy and get this in here and beat that until it's smooth. Okay. Add some of the milk or the eggnog, buttermilk, yogurt would work. You could use sour cream. Add a little bit more flour, a little bit more of the liquid, a little bit more of the flour. I'm also adding the pulp of the citrus. Now I wanted to add all of the dairy first so that it didn't curdle in here, okay, when it, you add the citrus. So make sure you add that first and then the juice of the orange. And the pulp. And beat this until it's just smooth. Done. I wish you could smell this. It is unbelievable. I can't wait for this to be baking in the house. It's going to be outstanding. Set this aside. Also, you want to clean your beaters in between because we're going to whip up those egg whites and make this such a nice, light, fluffy cake. Now, you could have added all that egg all together with the eggs and the yolk, but this way, it's going to make for a much lighter uh, texture. Okay, now we're going to whip our egg whites. Add your egg whites to a bowl and have a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar is going to help stabilize these egg whites and keep them nice and light and whipped. Mix that together for about 30 seconds or so. So now I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of sugar. You want to use white sugar, a nice fine sugar, um, on a high speed. Okay? We're going to get this to stiff peaks to where you pull the beaters out and the egg whites form peaks that stand up straight and don't fall. But you don't want to go so far as to make them dry. Now that, that can happen. So get them to a stiff peak. You can just check in between, but add this sugar gradually on a high speed until that happens. show you these stiff peaks. Here you go. So it forms a peak and stays there, but these are still nice and glossy. They're not dry. Okay. So I've prepared a tube pan. I've greased it well and I've added some tiger nut flour and just kind of loosely um, attached that to the butter. Ready? It's ready to go. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Next, I'm going to add about a quarter of these egg whites to my mixture and mix it in. 
folding as you go. Folding, folding. You want to retain those bubbles. You don't want to pop them. So you got to be gentle. You can already see how much lighter this batter is. Okay. And add the rest. And fold that in, which means going around it, folding the batter on top of it, and going around again, all the way to the bottom, scooping and putting that batter on top of it, trying to incorporate those whites. Now we're going to get this combined until it's just combined. You don't want to go anymore because you don't want to mess with those egg white bubbles, okay? Keep this as light and airy as you possibly can. As soon as it's just combined, we're gonna get it in the tube pan and get it right in the oven. Now I have my turkey in there and it's been going at 350, so it's already preheated and ready to go. All right, that looks good. This is what we're looking at. Light, fluffy, you can see the bubbles, in fact, in there. All right? Well, mom doesn't do this, but I do, just because it kind of makes me nervous sometimes when I use the tube pan. Um, <laughs> put it on a baking sheet, you don't have to do that. Into the pan it goes. You want to even it out in the pan just to make sure that it's going to rise evenly. And it looks and smells amazing already and it's not even baking yet. So this is going to bake for roughly 45 to 55 minutes in the oven on 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you're going to wait until it. you can put a toothpick through the center center outside of the tube, <laughs> um, the center, and it comes out clean, okay, or a skewer, whatever. So that's going to go 45 to 55 minutes. Make sure you're keeping an eye on it. I would check it around 40 minutes, and if you have a convection setting in your oven, I would use convection just to help get it fluffy and evenly baked, okay? So in this goes, that's what it looks like, into the oven it goes, and we'll see you in just a bit. Okay, this cake is done. Let's check it out with the skewer. If you put the skewer in the center, it should come out clean. All right? It's light, it's done, it's browned, it smells amazing in here. I can't wait to try this. So make sure you let this cool completely, at least an hour or so, before you try and remove it from the pan or do anything with it. So we'll see you then. All right, this spice cake has been cooling. It's all the way cool. We've eaten dinner and I'm ready to get this underway. So I'm gonna make a hot cake sauce to pour on top of this beautiful cake. And you can see here, looks beautiful. Now what I'm doing is I'm just running a sharp knife, a little sharp knife around the edges to make sure that it releases before I start trying to get it out of here. I don't wanna rip this apart after you've done so much hard work. So I'm also gonna run this along the tube to make sure that it's gonna remove here. This is a little trickier. Just be gentle, move slowly. This isn't a race. Okay, let's try and lift this out of this tube pan. Perfect, look at that. There we go. Now we're gonna run the knife along the bottom here. Just follow the curvature up to the tube so we can remove that. So put your plate or your pedestal on top and then flip it and we're gonna cross our fingers. Ready, go. And that's perfect, look at that. Okay, so here is your beautiful cake. Voila, you can leave it like this or you can sprinkle with sugar. That's what I'm gonna do, sprinkle it with some icing sugar. Just grab yourself a little sifter or a little strainer. A little bit of icing sugar in there. And lightly dust. Makes it look like snow. That makes me happy. Or you could totally coat it if you wanted to. Garnish, I'm gonna garnish with the holly in the middle. Don't eat holly, but it's a beautiful garnish, of course, for the winter. And it's abundant in my yard. There you go, beautiful winter spice cake, a Tiger Nuts winter spice cake. Now, you can serve it just like this, or you can serve it with ice cream, or you can serve it with whatever you, as you like. Today I'm gonna make a hot cake sauce, so I'll show you how to do that, and you can also get that recipe separately in a show, hot cake sauce, um, so that you can make it for another cake if you wanted to as well. So there you go, gorgeous. Okay, on my stove top, I have a small saucepan and I have one half of a cup of butter. 
Now let's melt that butter in this saucepan on medium heat. While I'm waiting for that to melt, I'm going to crack an egg into a small bowl and I'm gonna whisk it till it's nice and frothy. And we're gonna reserve that. Okay, my butter has melted. I'm adding one cup of brown sugar, packed, a third of a cup of water, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Now that's interchangeable. You could use any spices you like. You could use ginger, you could use fresh ginger or ground ginger, you could use nutmeg or cloves, anything that you like, cinnamon. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You could even make this a hard hot cake sauce and make it with bourbon or rum. Ooh, that would be nice. Whiskey. And I'm gonna add one tablespoon of maple syrup. We are Canadian after all. I'm gonna use a whisk and I'm gonna continuously stir this until all that sugar dissolves really, really well. Once that sugar has all dissolved, this, I've brought it up to a low, low boil, okay? Like a, just a simmer, just bubbling. And you're gonna see that it's really kind of thickened as well. You're gonna see that that sugar has made it thicker. So, take it off the heat for a second. I want you to make sure that that egg is nice and frothy. And we're gonna temper the egg. If you put this egg in this sauce right now, it's just gonna turn into scrambled eggs. And that is definitely not what you want in your hot sauce, okay? Your hot cake sauce. So what we need to do is we need to temper it. We're gonna add a little bit of this hot, hot liquid into these eggs. And we're going to stir that through, making sure that it doesn't scramble. Okay. Once you've done that, you should be fine to add it to your sauce. And I want you to whisk it while you're doing so. That's what, what tempering is, beautiful. Now we don't have scrambled eggs, but this is going to help thicken this sauce and make it a little bit more decadent, delicious. All right, back onto the stove. A couple minutes, low heat. So you're gonna stir this constantly until it's come to the thickness that you desire for your hot cake sauce. Of course, as this sauce cools, it will thicken up even more as well. Okay, once this comes up to like a simmer, bubbles are starting to form here. And the consistency of this is somewhat like corn, corn syrup, I would say, okay? I've been stirring it the whole time. I don't want it to stick to the bottom or anything. This is what we're looking at. Kind of like a gravy, it looks like a gravy, okay? I'm gonna let this sit for three minutes before I add my cream. I have two tablespoons of heavy cream and I'm gonna wait three minutes before I do that because I don't want that cream to break, okay? So sit tight. All right, that's three minutes. Now I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the eggs just for an extra precaution. I don't want this cream to break. Little bit of the sauce in the cream. Whisk that through and then I'm gonna whisk that into my sauce. Beautiful. Have yourself a quick taste. Bear in mind, this is super hot. It's like hot lava right now. Oh, oh my goodness. You would just want to eat it like that. Mmm, that is delicious. Wow, that's a hot cake sauce. Let me show you the consistency of what we're dealing with here. It's a nice dark sauce, just like our little cake here. Ooh wee, look at that. Now that would be great on cake. That would be great on ice cream. Boy, that's amazing. Now you could use different kinds of extract in here instead of vanilla. You could use rum, you could use cinnamon, you could use orange, whatever it is you like, okay? So let's pour that into our little gravy boat. I'm gonna serve it up like gravy. Ooh wee, look at that. Boy, it almost looks like a chocolate gravy if you've ever had that before. And there you go, hot cake sauce. Let's try it. Okay, mom, would you like a piece? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, here we go. I hate to cut into it, it's so pretty. Mommy, would you like hot cake sauce? I love it. 
Now that's a lovely cake. Look at how that's sliced up. Gorgeous. Hot cake sauce coming up. Here we go, mommy. Just drizzle that all over that cake. What a gorgeous sight. Oh my goodness. This is unbelievable. It's tasty? Uh-uh. Mm. Oh my God, it's so delicious. Now, would you think that that's a gluten-free cake? Never. <laughs> um. Made of a tuber? <laughs> it is fabulous. Oh my goodness. So this cake is beautiful. It's light. You can see the lovely bubbles. That's nice and light and fluffy. And it's still nice and moist as well. Let me show you. Hot cake sauce. Ooh, like molten lava. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Proof it in the pudding. Here we go. Ooh. It seems to be nice and light and crumbly here. That. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. It's not the worst for it. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. It's hard to believe that that comes from a tuber <laughs> and that it's not cake flour. Right. I would have never thought it mm. would be like that. And what an awesome gluten-free alternative for people over the holidays who often don't have much of a choice at all. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Mmm. <laughs> the cake is outstanding. It certainly is. It's so delicious. Full of spices. It has a wonderful texture. And that sauce is crazy good as well. Mmm. Mmm. It's perfect. The perfect ending to a very long holiday. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. So decadent. Mmm. Wonderful. The ginger, the cinnamon, the cloves, the nutmeg, the pumpkin pie spice. Ugh. And then it's like you put toffee on it. On top of that. That cake is delicious. It's not too sweet. It's just sweet enough. Of course, the sauce is sweet, but the cake itself isn't overly sweet. And I can really taste the orange, the orange zest and a little bit of orange juice we have in there. Mmm. That is a moist, delicious cake. Wow. Mmm. Rich, decadent. Exactly what you want for the holidays. Delightful. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So that's nut free and gluten free, all thanks to Tiger Nuts. Check them out online at tigernutsusa.com for their flour, their nuts, their oil, their smoothie mix, all of that. Everything that I've had from them is absolutely divine. Very versatile products that really, like I said, is an epiphany in the kitchen, for real. And that's how you do it. That's how you bake a gluten free Tiger Nuts winter spice cake with hot cake sauce. Doesn't that sound awesome? It is. Oh, it's just nice and spicy. Woo! That little bit of kick of cayenne, too, you can taste, eh, Mom? Mmm. -hmm. Mm. I love that. It's, and it has that quality. This is perfect. Perfect cake. And that's it. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. Check out my Instagram.com slash Web Chef of All Trades. You can find my shows online at YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. And come to our website at Cooking with Kimberly.com. Subscribe and interact with us. Let us know what's going on in your culinary world. All right? Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.